In this tutorial, I will show you how to texture bake a procedural material to tileable seamless texture maps, like a texture map that you would download from an online texture website. And to do this, we're going to be using Blender to texture bake the material to image textures, and then we're going to be using GIMP to make the textures tileable. And if you're unfamiliar with it, GIMP is a free open source image editing program. And I'll have a link in the description to GIMP's official website if you'd like to download it if you don't already have it. And if you'd like to learn the basics of texture baking in Blender, then you can definitely check out my texture baking for beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And you can also check out my texture baking tutorial playlist to learn more about texture baking. So as an example, I'm going to be using my procedural dirt material, which I created a little while back. And if you'd like to use the same exact procedural material that I'm using, then you can check out the procedural dirt material with the link in the description. Or you can also help support this channel and purchase the procedural dirt project files on my Gumroad store. And you can also purchase the tileable dirt texture maps on my Gumroad store, links in the description. I'm also selling my procedural materials in procedural material packs, so if you'd like to check out my procedural material packs, link will be in the description, and that's also a great way to help support this channel. You can also learn how to create any of my procedural materials with my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. Now this method of tiling won't work well for materials which have a consistent pattern. For instance, something like brick or tile. Tiles. But this method works really well for any type of organic materials, so things like dirt or rock or stone or metals or plaster or really any organic material. So the first thing I'm going to do is press Shift A, I'm going to go here to Mesh and I'm going to add a plane. And then I'm going to select this object here and just move it out of the way. And I just want to select the plane right here and then I'm in the shading workspace so I have the 3D viewport over here and the shader editor right here. So I'm going to click on the drop down and I want to add the procedural dirt material to the plane. So whichever material you're baking to texture maps, you just need to add that material to the plane. And then I don't need any of the other objects, so I can press Control i in the 3D viewport. That's going to invert the selection, so now all the other objects are selected. And I can press the X key and click on Delete. So I'm now going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered mode so that I can preview the texture. And it is a little bit hard to see the texture in this lighting, so if you wanted to, you could press Shift A and you could add a light object. Or what you can also do over here in the world is just turn up the world strength. So I've added in an HDRI in the world, and I'm just going to turn the strength up to like 4 so that it is brighter so it's really easy to see the texture. Now this plane here is what we're going to be texture baking. So if you want to scale the size of the texture then now's the time to do that. So in the shader editor in this procedural setup I've added all these textures and this mapping node is being plugged up to all the textures. And I'm also using the object coordinates here with the texture coordinate and that's very standard when creating procedural materials. So on the mapping node you can just click on the scale value and then you can drag down and then you can drag back and forth and that's going to change all the values at the same time and so you can scale the texture bigger or smaller. Or of course you can just individually go to the scale values of the procedural textures and make them bigger or smaller. But I like how this is so the next thing that I need to do is create an image to bake to. Now as I mentioned earlier if you'd like to learn the basics of texture baking in Blender then you can definitely check out my texture baking for beginners tutorial but I will really quick just go over the basics of texture baking. So in the shader editor I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for an image texture and let's put the image texture down here and then we want to create a new image that we can bake to so I'm going to click on the new button and on the name here I can just call this dirt. Now on the width and height this is going to be the resolution of the texture and on default it is a 1k texture. I want this to be a 4k texture so I'm going to click and then drag down and then let go to change both the values at the same time and I'm going to change this to 4096 by 4096 and that is the standard resolution for a 4k texture. And then on all the other settings, we can just leave it at the default, and I will click on OK. So this is the image that we're going to bake to. Now before we bake this, we need to make sure that the UV unwrapping is nicely placed on the image. So what I'm going to do is click right up here to go to the UV editing workspace. And the default plane in Blender, when you add a plane, it is already UV unwrapped, so you shouldn't have to UV unwrap it. But if you need to, you can just press the A key to select all the vertices, and you can press U, and then you can just click on unwrap, and we just want to UV 
unwrap it to the dirt image. And this UV unwrap is exactly what we want because we want the UV island to be filling the entire texture. So we can now go back to the shading workspace. And for this material, I'm going to be baking the base color and the roughness and the normal. But if you have other maps like metallic maps or emission maps, then you can check out my texture baking tutorial playlist where I show you how to bake other maps. So to bake this, we're going to click right here on the render properties, and on the render engine, you need to make sure this is cycles. EV doesn't support baking. If you are using EV, that's totally fine. You can change it to cycles, then you can bake the material, and then afterwards you can change it back to EV. But make sure it's set to cycles for now while we're doing the baking. And then right here on the sampling, if we turn the samples down, then it will bake faster, but it won't affect the quality of the bake. So I'm just going to turn the render samples here to 1, and then I can close the sampling tab. So we can now open open up the bake tab right here and I'm just going to click and drag and bring it up here so it's on the top. Now on the bake type here I want to start by baking the color map so I'm going to click on this bake type and I'm going to change this to diffuse and diffuse is the same as color and then we don't want it to bake the lighting data we just want it to bake the color so here on the contributions I'm going to turn off the direct and indirect but just leave the color on. So then to bake the image you need to make sure that the object is selected and then you need to make sure that this image texture is selected in the material and that way Blender will know to bake to this image and then you can click on the bake button. And then to see the image when it's finished baking, what I'm going to do is click right up here in the corner when the crosshair appears, and I can click and drag down to split the window. And then if you click right up here to change the editor type, we can change this to the image editor. And then in the image editor, you can click on the drop down and just click on the dirt. So we now need to save this to an image on our computer. So let's click here on image and then we can click on save as. And I'm just going to rename this to dirt color and I'll just save it as a PNG file and I will click on save as. So we now just need to bake the other two maps. So right here on the bake type, we can change this to the roughness and then we can bake to the same image texture and just save it as a different map. Now what's really important with the other maps is that the color space here, we want to set this to non-color. We have the color space for the color map set to the sRGB, and that is because the color map is contributing to the base color of the material. But any of the other maps which aren't contributing to the base color of the material, like the roughness and the normal, those maps need to be set to non-color before you bake them so they bake correctly. And then here on the bake type, this is set to roughness. So then again, make sure the object is selected and make sure the image is selected and you can click on the bake button again. And here is the roughness map. So to save the image, you can click here on image and then click on save as. And then this one I'm going to rename to dirt roughness.png and I'll click on save as image. So now we can do the normal map. So on the bake type right here, I can just change this to the normal. And then again, the color space needs to be set to non-color. So then make sure the object is selected, make sure this image is selected and you can click on bake again. And then just like the other maps, you can click up here on image and click on save as. And then this one I will save to dirtnormal.png and click on save as. So now that we've baked the images, I want to delete this material and add a new material and then add up all the images. So just in case I need to go back and rebake this or use the procedural dirt material again, I'm going to click on this button right here, the shield icon, and that's going to add a fake user. And this way, even if we delete the material from the object, it's still going to keep this data in the Blender file just in case I need to go back to it. So I can now click on the X button to get rid of it. And then let's click on new here to add a new material to the plane. And then to add in all the images, I'm going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on Edit and you can go to the Preferences. And then over there on the Add-ons tab, you can search for Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can click on the principled shader and then you can press Control Shift T and Control shift t will bring up Blender's file browser, and then you can just select all the images. So I'm going to hold down the Control key and select the dirt, roughness, normal, and color. And then right down here, I can click on Principled Texture Setup. And this is automatically going to set up all the textures for us. So now here in the 3D viewport, you can see the dirt material has been baked to these texture maps.
However, these maps are not tileable. So if I click right up here to change the editor type, I'm going to change this to the UV editor. And then I will press the tab key to go into edit mode of the object. And if I scale the UV editing, I can then press tab to go back to object mode. And if you look right here, you can see a visible seam. So I'm going to press control space bar with my mouse in the 3D viewport, and you can clearly see a seam right there. So we're now going to make the images tileable in GIMP so that there isn't any seam. All right, so here I am in GIMP, and I'm just going to drag and drop in the images. So I'm first going to do the normal map just because the normal map has the most contrast, and so it's easy to see what's happening. So now to make this tileable, we can click right here on filters, and we can go down here to map, and then we can click on the tile seamless option. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take the image data from one side, and it's going to bring it over to the other side, and then blend it together. Now if you change this opacity here, you can see it taking effect. Now you don't want the opacity to be in the middle, because if it's in the middle, it's not going to take its full effect, and so you still will be able to see a little bit of the tiling. So I'm going to turn the opacity all the way to 1, and that way there won't be any tiling. So I can just click on the OK button. And then I can save this image, so I'm just going to click on File, and then you could click on Export As, and you could export this as a different image, but I'm just going to override the Dirt Normal, because I know this will work fine, so I will override the Dirt Normal, and then wait for that to save. So I'm now going to do the exact same thing for the other image textures. So right here I can click on the X button to get rid of this project, and I can discard the changes, and then I can just drag and drop from my file browser the color map. And then again, click on filter, and you can go down here to map, and then you can click on tile seamless. And make sure that the opacity is 100, click on OK, and then you can click on File, and we can override Dirt Color. And I'll do the same thing for the roughness map, so I'll get rid of this image, I'll drop in the roughness map, and then I can go to Filters, and Map, and Tile Seamless, make sure the opacity is 100, and click on OK, and then I can click on File, and override Dirt Roughness. So then you can jump back into Blender, and if you saved the images from GIMP to different images, then you're going to need to re-add them here in the shader editor. But I just overrided the materials, so I just need to refresh the viewport now so that it will use the updated textures. So what I'm just going to do is press Ctrl S to save the Blender file, and then I will close Blender and open it back up again. And I've opened back up the Blender file, so the material preview has reloaded the textures. And you can see that the seam was right there, but it is no longer there. So there we have it, now the texture is completely seamless and tileable. If I control shift and select the base color or the roughness and the normal, you can see here is the image data, but you can see it's completely seamless. And if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, I can press the A key to select the UV map, and I can scale it up to make it bigger or smaller, and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it, and you can see that there is no seams. So that is it, that is how you turn a procedural material into tileable seamless texture maps. And if you'd like to purchase my Blender procedural materials, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material packs with the link in the description. And you can also learn how to create any of my procedural materials with my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And if you'd like to learn more about texture baking in Blender, then definitely check out my texture baking tutorial playlist where I have many more texture baking tutorials. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.